In this video, we're going to create a new endpoint that actually allows us to create a new to-do item. Therefore, we add a new function with its name create. It has a handler, which we're going to place in the to-do's directory. There will be a create.js file and it will export a create function. We attach an HTTP event with the path to-do's, the method it accepts should be post, and we also enable course. There's one more thing we have to do in our configuration file, because right now our create function wouldn't have access to the NamoDB. It couldn't write or retrieve data. Therefore, we're going to add a new attribute to the provider. It is the identity and access management role statements. This generates a new policy and all actions that are defined in this attribute are actually applied to all the functions in our service. You also can define certain roles per function, but for simplicity reasons, we're simply going to make this one role that is going to be available to all our functions. In the actions, you can see the scribe table, query, scan, get item, put item, up to the item, and delete item. And these actions are available to all our functions. We are done with the configuration and can move on to code. Let's create the directory to do's and then create the create.js file. In the beginning, we're going to define the literal expression useStrict, which enables the strict mode. Then we're going to require the AWS SDK. And with that AWS SDK, we're instantiating at the NemoDB client. After that, we're defining the function we're going to export. So module.exports.create. This function takes three arguments. It's the event, the context and the callback. To store data in the NemoDB, we can use the put method of the NemoDB instance. It accepts two arguments. The first one are the parameters and the second one is a callback. The callback also accepts two arguments. The first one will be an error and the second one the result. And only if really an error happened, the error will be a truthful value and we can check for that in an if statement. Inside the if statement, we are logging out the error so we can retrieve it later from the logs and we're going to invoke the callback with a new error. There's going to be an error message so the user can be informed what actually happened. Then we return to break out of the function at this point. In case storing the item was successful, we're going to construct the response with a status code 200 and the body which we're going to stringify and it's going to be the item and take this response to invoke the callback. The first argument has to be null and the second one the response. But not yet, we are done. We actually haven't defined the parameters yet that we provide to the put function of DynamoDB. So let's define the params. It's actually going to be a simple JavaScript object with the table name to do's, which we defined in the config earlier, and then the actual item, which is going to include an ID that we have to generate, obviously. Therefore, we're going to require the UID library that we installed before. Our to-do item also has a description text. There's an indicator which is Boolean if it's checked or not. We have created at and updated at. The timestamp for created and updated at, we're going to generate with new date and then get timestamp. The text should be provided in a request and therefore we have to extract it from the event body. Last but not least, we're going to add a validation to verify that the text is a string. If it's not a string, we're going to log out an error and invoke the callback with a new error instance. As we now have defined our configuration as well as our code, we can run serverless deploy. It packages the service and uploads the code and the cloud formation file. After our deploy has been successful, in the output we can see our deployed HTTP endpoint. We're going to copy the whole HTTP endpoint to actually invoke it with curl. So we type curl-x post, then the HTTP endpoint, dash dash data, and provide the data as a JSON. To verify that our request actually stored a new entry, we're going to go to the console check out the to-dos table and verify that there's a new entry. 
Here you can see it. The text says learn serverless.